We're back with more number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. We continue to talk about the Penguins, what might have been, what wasn't. So, Andrew, now we have another situation. We got yeah. a lot of people out there call our show, I'm sure call you, dissatisfied with Matt Murray. There are the flurry people out there who said it should have never been traded. Okay, that happened, should have happened based on age differential we're talking about. Well, what do they do with Matt Murray now? Because to me, they have no choice. They have to sign him long term. Do you agree? And how much would it cost? Well, why do they have to? I mean, why can't he go in Who else next do they have? Well, why can't they go into next season, see how he does, and then figure out from more there? More money. What, what, wait, what? If he has a great year, more money. Okay. I mean, I'd run that risk with him. I'd, okay. I'd see if he can stay healthy again and see if he can get me out of the first round of the playoffs. Hey, maybe I'm bamboozled because I watched what the Islanders did, but they gave Robin Leonard $1.5 million in free agency, and he's a Vesna finalist. And the guy that played behind him played, what, 40 games in Grice and was fourth in the league in goals against average and save percentage. So... Hey, Matt Murray, I appreciate what he did. It was like a Ken Dryden-esque start to his career. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself here and start paying him like he's Marc-Andre Fleury or Carey Price and give him six, seven million dollars because, frankly, I don't think he's worth it. I really don't see that scenario unfolding, Andrew. I mean, given Jim Rutherford's respect for Matt Murray and the relationship those guys have, having won two cups, I think they get something done this summer. Well, I how do they make it work from a salary cap standpoint, Jason? If you trade Phil, you're fine. If you trade Ole, you're fine. So they that's can, how your they, team gets better? You just give your goaltender more money? I, I don't think they're going to allow him to play into a contract year after he won two cups for them. I don't, I, it's not really about getting better. It's about what I think they think is smart business. I mean, I, I just I find is it tough to believe. Is that smart business or is that loyalty to a guy? Okay, it's probably loyalty more than smart business. But I, I just I don't see but them going to let him go. Year. Going oh, but all I here. would say is he show had a me good the. Year. I, I agree, and and I know Josh has a good point on this probably. But show me the teams that are paying their goaltenders big money who are winning Stanley Cups. It's not like you know you feel like you have to give a quarterback big money because you need one to win. Look at the teams that are still playing in this year's playoffs. I don't think it's going to be big money, and then I'll get out of the way so Josh can make it. I, I would peg it between five and six. You can do it either way. You can win a Stanley Cup with a, a goaltender who makes a ton of money. Vegas very well might do that. And six weeks from now, it happens. Right. I, I think Matt Murray went a long way toward landing a big contract with his play in the last three months of the regular season. He had great numbers playing behind a team that, let's be honest, uh, was not the 95 Devils defensively. I, I, saw, I talked with Jim Rutherford back in November. I said, what's wrong with your goaltender? He said, ask me at the end of the regular season. Let's give him a few months to prove himself. I think he did that enough. I would guess between five and six million will be enough. That is a lot of money for a goaltender. They do have a cheap goaltender in Casey to Smith, however, as the backup that helps a little bit. They don't have anyone else. Tristan Jari, if they thought he was any good, he would be playing in the NHL at this level. They, they obviously don't. He's the guy. Jason Mackey, which defenseman is more likely to be traded? Chris Letang, Ole Mata, or Justin Schultz? Uh, definitely not Schultz. They're going to keep him around. I would imagine Ole Mata is the first to go. And it's nothing against Ole Mata at all. It's more just the fact that he's a 24-year-old defenseman who's won a couple of cups, who everybody around the league knows he's the furthest thing from an attitude problem and could probably step in and help somebody else's blue line. And if they can get Latang right, which is to get him to realize sort of score and situation, and I don't want to say taking a more conservative approach because we all know how that – rubbed Latang the other day. <laughs> Watch but, yourself, Jason. Uh, <laughs> I know. I won't make any mistakes, Jason. From here on out, I won't <laughs> That's have not what I meant. I just meant picking some spots. I'll be perfect on this show from now on. <laughs> if we can get him to pick spots, I think it makes the most sense to move Ole. They're going to trade somebody on the left side. Uh, they are very content with the right side, assuming Latang stays, which I think he will. If you have Latang, Schultz, Goodbranson on the right side, that's really good. So you look at the left side, it's awfully crowded. They love Pedersen. He works cheap. It's not going to be him. They love Dumoulin. So that tells me either Jack Johnson or Ole Mata is going to be traded. I don't know that they can trade Johnson. That contract, it, I know it's not a ton of money, but four years for Jack Johnson, I don't know that there are any teams out there that would be willing to bite on that. The Penguins would have to retain a lot of money. Ole Mata is a different story. He's 24 years old. He's won two Stanley Cups. He's very yeah. highly regarded around the league. You could get something for him. You could clear some money up. I think Mott is the most likely to go. I, I would trade Latang because I'll go back to what Sullivan said. They played their best hockey in March. They did it with who? Latang out of the lineup. They won a Stanley Cup without him two years ago. If they're going to get to playing the right way, I think they need to get rid of a guy who has a pens penchant for making reckless plays in precarious situations. So very talented player, one of the best defensemen 
in team history, but I think it makes the most sense to move him. But I wouldn't trade him just for the sake of trading him. I will say that. If you can get a big return for Chris Letang, this may be the time to think about it. He's had two bad playoffs in a row. I don't think he's ever going to change his game. Me neither. So th- that's an issue, yes, but I wouldn't just get rid of him for the heck of it. I think he's too good for that. Plus, you may have to retain salary there, too. That's a big, they're all big contracts. That's a dilemma for a GM, for sure. All right, now it's time to go round the horn for this week's Smooth Moves, brought to you by Armina Stone. Pittsburgh's largest supplier of the smoothest granite, marble, and quartz countertops you will find. That's Armina Stone. So, Andrew, your smooth move of the week is? Bob, this is a smooth move first. This is going to be a shout-out to my in-laws. I'm going to suck up to them right now. You want to talk about a trade. Ham out, prime rib in for Easter. It was like Ricardo Rincon for Brian Giles, Rob Scuderi for Trevor Daly, all over again. One of the biggest (laughs) trades in Pittsburgh history. On the dinner table today, boys. Wow, that's really good. I'm jealous now because I ate ham today and I don't really like it that much. So I think <laughs> think your in-laws are really onto something. I'm going to go with Cole Tucker and everything about his first day. He hits a home run right after lightning strikes. He's unbelievably charismatic and likable. The biggest problem with the Pirates, other than their cheapness, is the fact that they're dull. They're boring. There's nothing interesting there. He made me want to watch again today. I love the change-up from the uh... – Easter staple of ham, Andrew. I'm right with you. My yes. uh, my mother-in-law does Mission Street kibasi. It's excellent. Mm. Um, I lost I, out today. All right. <laughs> <laughs> my smooth move is actually going to be in a different direction. I'm going with the Oakland Raiders and John Gruden and Mike Mayock and whatever the heck is going on out in Oakland. <laughs> but I find it hilarious. Giving our friend Antonio Brown is out there, and the scouting <laughs> staff is going home, and we don't know who to trust. So have fun, boys. That's we'll bring some stability. Don't worry. <laughs> And since we're giving shout-outs, I have to praise my mother-in-law, who's 88. She still makes Easter brunch better than anybody. Beat a rose, you should open up your own diner. With the pineapple in the ham. Oh, it's unbelievable. Thanks, (laughs) B. Anyway, those are the Smooth Moves of the Week, brought to you by Armina Stone. They uh, feature Pittsburgh's largest indoor stone gallery, granite marble countertops imported from all over the world to give you the smoothest countertops in your area. Score a touchdown right now with new granite countertops from Armina Stone. Pirate Talk next.